So we're gonna make a procedural leather material. And the neat thing about this is that it has procedural controls in place that will allow you to adjust the age, the tint, the brightness, and the bumpiness of the material. I'll go over the controls first, and if you don't wanna make this material from scratch, I will leave a link to my leather material node in the description, and then we'll get into how to actually make it. So by default, this node group can be added and the albedo, roughness, and normal plugged into their respective slots. The leather age and roughness will allow you to control how aged and how rough the texture appears. Uh, this will allow you to, for example, get appearances of brand new leather to something that looks really, really old and tattered. Or you can also adjust the roughness in order to get a look that is more akin to something like suede. And if you want to get rid of the sort of cracks in the background, you can hide those a little bit by adjusting how faded they are. Next, the bumpiness can be used to adjust how bumpy or smooth the texture appears, and you can also change the scale of the bump. You can also adjust the scale of the albedo, which will give your material a more a sort of mottled appearance. Or if you scale it down, then the appearance will be much more uniform. Lastly, all of the components of this can be scaled independently, so if you want very large scale cracks, you can do that, or if you want very small scale cracks, you can also do that as well. The leather brightness scale controls how bright or dark the leather material is. This can be used to give you brighter leathers, like sheepskin for example, or you can also turn it all the way down to zero to get a much more dark leather color. And then finally, for colored leathers, we also have a tint, which will allow you to tint the general color uh, of, the, of the leather. This will be useful if you had some particular color in mind for your material. But it's probably more useful just for uh, sort of giving a more specific tone to the material instead of outright changing the color. But the tool is there, so use it however you will. And on top of all this, this is a fully procedural material. So the material itself is broken up into several, dis several different components which can be found inside the node group. And these control the base color, they control the cracks, and they also control the bumpiness of the material. For the base color, I simply have several different leather RGB values plugged into uh, mixed RGB nodes and they're being sort of mixed together using color ramps and noise textures. Essentially the idea here is we're creating a noise texture over the surface of the object and using that in order to drive the factor to mix between two base colors. And this is repeated several times over in order to get a very complex mixture of base colors. So I've started with a noise texture node, plugged into a color ramp node, plugged into a mix RGB node, and that mix RGB node will have two leather color values, which will be sort of the base color for the material. I tend to start with a light and a dark, and then mix in some sort of more highlights and darks with the sort of successive addition of more noise textures. So we start with a very large sort of smooth noise texture, which is gonna mix these white and black areas between the brown and the lighter brown, and then that is going into a mix RGB node set to mix, and then I just duplicated this noise texture and color ramp down a couple of times and changed the scale of the noise texture. So I duplicated this setup four times in order to get what I thought was a pretty good mix of colors with darks and highlights, and then I plugged that into the color output for the base color of the material. The next part of this is the normal map, so you can see that the uh, surface of this is not completely smooth, so we need to create some bumps. The way that I created this was I created a Voronoi texture and I plugged the UV texture coordinate node into this, and then I plugged that Voronoi texture into a color ramp, and I dragged the white handle just a little bit back towards the left. And if I control shift click, you can see that this is what our map looks like. Then I just used a mix RGB node in order to mix that with a simple noise texture, which is also uh, receiving the same UV inputs. This then acts as the height input for our bump map, and that is then plugged into the normal slot on the material shader. And I also turned down the bump strength to be quite low, so this is set at a distance of 0 0.02 and a strength of 0 0.1. You can turn the scale way down on this second noise texture node down here, and then also plug a clamped value into the factor of this mix node. And what that's gonna do is allow you to have a bumpiness value that you can use as an input to control whether or not you want those bumps to show on your final texture. That way, if you turn the bumpiness value down to zero, the leather will be completely smooth, but if you turn the bumpiness value up, 
the bumps will start to appear and this will allow you to get fine control over whether you have a bumpy leather or a smooth leather. And I tend to find that a default value for that input about, of about 0.2 is good. Now if you look at some references of old leather bags, you'll find that they almost all have this sort of um, crackly texture sort of underneath. And so in order, to, in order to add this, we need to mix this into the roughness and into the albedo for the material. So the way I created this was first by creating a texture coordinate and mapping node and then plugging those into noise textures. I then mixed those noise textures into a Voronoi texture and then added a color ramp and dragged the white handle all the way back to the left hand side. And what this does is sort of just restrict the Voronoi to sort of just the black outline here. And that's what's going to give us our sort of mottled crack, crackly appearance. On the Voronoi texture, I also set the type to 3D and distance to edge, and then I changed the scale value to about 15. Now this doesn't really look interesting enough on its own. I think that this looks sort of good, but it's not quite as complex as I would have liked. So I also duplicated this a second time, and then I just changed the scale to about double. That way we've got a Voronoi texture that is more fine, that's a lot smaller, and we've also got one up here that is a little bit larger. Then I ran both of these into a mix node so that we have an output that combines both of these into sort of a blended crackly appearance. I also mix the lower one with a noise texture just to make it a little bit less prominent than the upper one, which is a little bit, a little bit intense. I then used a mix node uh, with those cracks as the factor to mix our albedo color from earlier with the cracks color, which is just a lighter brown color. And then that mix goes into the albedo and that will become our base color for the leather material, which will allow us to have control over uh, whether we want those cracks to be very prominent or not. And in mine, you'll notice I also added some extra controls here. I added a mix node with a white color, uh, which I've set to mix here, and then a factor with a value that allows me to mix in more white. And as you turn up this factor on this mix node, you'll notice that the cracks disappear. And so this allows us to hide them if we want. And so the value that I plugged into this factor is the value on the uh, texture node group, which is called cracks fade. And essentially what that does is just hide the cracks from, from being displayed on the surface of the material. I gave this a group input node with a standard value of zero to one. By default, it's set to zero, but if you turn this up, you'll notice that as we approach one, it's mixing in more white to that factor and the cracks disappear from the surface of the leather. Now, the last thing that we need to do in order to create this is also give it a roughness value. And in order to do that, I did two things. First, I mixed in a roughness value for the leather material on its own. So that is just a value input, which goes into this mix node. But I also mix that with the output of this node here, which contains the information from our surface cracks. And the reason for that is that's what's going to allow us to increase or decrease uh, that crackling or sort of the roughness on those cracked areas. And that gives the leather its aged appearance. That way, as we turn up this leather age value here, which is just a, a value input on this node group, you'll find that the sort of roughness spreads a little bit and becomes more prominent and that gives the leather a more aged appearance. And this is separate from the roughness value itself, which as you turn up to one, turns it up, but not over the cracked areas. This is how we're able to get fine control over the material in order to create roughness in the areas we want and smoothness in the areas we want. And this way we can get a wide variety of appearances for our leather. So I created a bunch of inputs, which are all the value inputs we discussed in here, and I gave them appropriate default values. And lastly, I added a mix RGB node set to multiply with a color input, which I call tint, which is what will allow you to tint your material. And that's really all there is to it. And if you don't want to make your own, again, I will put a link to my leather node in the description and you can add that to your project files and use it however you'd like. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a comment, like, or subscribe, and uh, I'll know that I should make more of this type of content. So that's all I've got for you right now, but uh, I hope this is useful for you.